sorry we had to put you through this, Miss Garrison. It's all right. That must have been rugged. Poor Lily. Were you able to help them? I don't think so. Oh, Carla, it was terrible. They asked me to... to identify the body. Oh, Emily, no. Well, it's over with. Charles, you go ahead and park the car and I'll come through the yard. I'd rather wait, Miss Emily. I'm with him. Well, you're both just darling. But I'm not going to live in fear of walking through our own backyards. Charles, you go ahead and park. Are you all right? Yes, miss. You wouldn't catch me out here alone at night. What have you got? A bottle of Bray pills or something? Hey, look, Carla. Why don't I wait here? I mean, if I go up, your mother will get have all sorts of hysterical questions. Mother to... is like that. I'll just be a second. Sleep in front of the television set. But then isn't half of America. Good night, Carla. Be careful. Another mother in the making. Check it out here. I've been trying to fix. Go ahead, dear. Well, it's over with. 
Good night, Luther. Good night, dear. wandering out alone, Emmeline. It's Emmeline, Mr. Kleiner. Well, now, I'm not sure the werewolf of Oakmont would care how you pronounced it. And wouldn't one of the two surviving garrisons make an excellent choice of prey? Oh, I'm sorry. You knew the girl, didn't you? How was your business meeting, Mr. Kleiner? Dreadful. Your dear Aunt Helen refused my proposal. I, I think I'd better go in. No, no, no. Misery loves company. Can't you be a bit shattered, too? Well, uh, she's involved in so many different ventures with you, and being confined, she likes to keep active. I said proposal. Proposal of marriage. How old are you, Emmeline? Fifteen. Not going on sixteen? I thought all fifteen-year-old girls are going on sixty. Well, perhaps I'm not all fifteen-year-old girls, Mr. Perhaps not. Do you believe that patience is a virtue? Well, until now, I always thought so. Good night. Good night, Emmeline. Now, did he propose to you, too, Emmeline? He was talking about patience. Was it virtues? Just not quite sure which. He did tell you about the proposal. Well, kiss and tell. Isn't that what they always say? Kiss? Oh, tell now, there's a certainty. He'll brag to half the state that he was intimate enough with Helen Garrison Bradford to propose to her. Oh, he wouldn't do that. Why not? Now, this is one affair d'amour a man like Warren Kleiner will spend a lifetime planning. He majored in women like me and then did postgraduate work on how to exploit the conquest. Well, I thought you liked him. I adore him. He's like a, a good novel after a dull biography. Let this be a lesson to you, Emmeline. When you're older, my dear, and have a few flings, remember, fling with men who don't boast. Oh, he's a just for laughs, St. Helen. I mean, he comes here so often. Everyone we know thinks he's a close family friend. He's, he's charming, brilliant, magnificent company, great conversationalist, and fortunately, I can afford his companionship. I ought to keep a diary. What an amusing entry this would make. How would you put it? I'm not too sure. Well, what could he want from me? Money? Oh, I don't think so. His type survives equally well with or without. And besides, I've financed him in three ventures. He's made them all quite lucrative. Could he want sex? <laughs> I read where the drive-in movies have a monopoly on that. Well, maybe he loves you. Now, I always said you'd perpetuate the garrison sense of humor. Well, I think he's kind of cute. And I think you're looking at him through teenage glasses. What are those? Mmm. Skinny pills. Dear Dr. Server has decided I eat too much. Oof. Would you get me some brandy? Oh, really? What else did dear Dr. Server have to say about dear Aunt Helen? He was far more concerned about Luther. Luther? What do you mean? I think the last time the doctor had his hands on Luther, he cut his umbilical cord and slapped him on the rear. Hmm. Dr. Service's stethoscope was cold enough to make anyone's heart skip a beat. Now, that's a habit I should never indulge. Do you think it's serious, Andy? Your drinking or Luther's heart? Luther, Aunt Helen. No, it's not pressing, but to be considered. Kind of hard to believe. Luther with a heart thing. So many things 
kind of hard to believe. Like tonight. And Lily. I haven't forgotten where you've been, Emmeline. I thought perhaps you'd rather not talk about it. I knew, Auntie. Now, do you have homework? Oh, yeah. I think I'll get up early and do it. Didn't I hear Charles parking minutes before you came in? I had something to pick up at Carla's, so I came through the yard. You did what? You know, I think if you looked at Mr. Kleiner without these glasses... No, you give me those and you listen to me. You are never to come through that yard alone at night. Or for that matter, to go any place alone at night in Oakmont. And you needn't sigh that particular sigh. What is it about children that makes them resent every adult concern for their welfare? What am I supposed to do? Hi hibernate after sundown? Emmeline, be a lady. Emmeline, watch who you go out with. Emmeline, remember you're a garrison. Please, Auntie, I'm not seven years old. Neither was Lily. You seem to forget there's a killer loose. But he doesn't live in our own backyard. I'll drift outside and sit by the pool. Watch my own reflection. It's infinitely more flattering than my bedroom mirror. I guess I better go to bed. You're very beautiful, Auntie. You're beautiful, child. Good night.
two-hour drive from the airport. That should get them here in about 45 minutes. Oh, we'll be ready for them. We can get that downstairs straightened up in no time. That downstairs? Might as well try to clean the Golden Gate Bridge with a Brillo pad in no time. Oh, well, they're only using the center portion. The rest of the house stays locked up like always. Furniture looks brand new. Some of it is brand new. Mr. Kleiner had it shipped here last week. Oh, the changes that shall be wrought. Yeah, and one of them shall be that you wear your trunks when you go swimming at night. On second thought, you can do your swimming in the lake. If it's good enough for the fish, it's good enough for Luther's nephew. Better bring some logs in later. It's summertime. Who wants a fire? Well, they just might. They were just married last night, you know. They've been traveling ever since. Still a lover, huh? We better clean this fireplace up, too. I wonder who designed this place. Eighty years ago. Still a lot of lessons we could learn from him. Well, I bet we couldn't get them in those tract houses I work on. The same place you're working for now, designed and built this place. There, you see? You are the family historian. You have to learn something about a place after you've been caring for it for some 20-odd years. Just earning my keep. Well, I've got a place in the basement for... Craig Schoonover, Mr. Kleiner, Luther's nephew. Oh, I wrote you that Craig was staying with me in the guest house. I may want to rearrange this furniture. It does my heart good to have you back home again, Miss Emily. Thank you, Luther. I'll bet you don't remember the time. You were about ten. I was visiting here. I was all dressed up in a brand new suit. She remembers you nothing, get... Mr. Schoonover. Or perhaps I should call you Craig, since you'll evidently be assisting your uncle in exchange for my hospitality. You see, gentlemen, my wife is perfectly well and happy. Her sole affliction is a memory that recalls only the last six of her 21 years. But the finest doctors in Europe repeatedly assured me there need be no concern. When Emmeline wants to remember, she will. In the interim, any encouragement in this area is ill-advised and will not be appreciated by either of us. Do I make myself clear? Sorry, Mr. Kleiner, we didn't know. We thought perhaps with the years that have passed... Emmeline, perhaps uh, I could sit for you sometime. My wife is very talented, gentlemen. She was exhibited in Zurich. It's just one seascape. Yes. A painting of me. Luther, Craig, we'll have a lot to talk about. As I uh, indicated in my cable, for the time being, we'll use only this area of the house. I've engaged a small staff in Europe. As soon as I can arrange for their passage, they'll take over the immediate household. In the meantime, uh, perhaps, Luther, you can hire a girl to come in a few days a week, tidy up, do the kitchen chores. I prefer to do the cooking myself. I'll take care of it. I think I should explain something, Mr. Kleiner. I'm not here because of any financial stress. I'm an architect, employed and doing quite well for myself. I don't doubt it for a moment, Craig. If I've offended you, I insist on apologizing over dinner some night. The first chance I have to prepare one of my specialties. Don't let me forget, Emmeline. No. No, I won't. Uh, if 
you'll let me have the keys to your car trunk, Mr. Kleiner, Thank I you. could be bringing in your luggage. Thank you. I'll give you a hand with it. And, uh, thank you, Craig. Did anything happen? No. Nothing. I was so sure. So sure I remember something. House. Luther. Something. Emily, perhaps it isn't worth remembering. Would you like some more coffee? Please. I use too much oregano. If you can't remember the house, you will hardly remember a cup. It's going to seem strange. No classes to attend, lessons to study. I'm afraid I'm going to have an awful lot of time on my hands. You'll make new friends in time. Perhaps new friends of old friends. You can swim, paint. If you like to ride, maybe we can find a good horse. We have the stables. I'll be away much of the time. It'll be up to you to occupy yourself. But for the moment, there's the problem of the dishes. Perhaps you can occupy yourself with those while I make a call. I almost hope Luther doesn't find us a girl too soon. Well, if you insist, maybe we can postpone it. I'll be in the library. Warren Kleiner. I'm terribly sorry to bother you at home, but, well, I do have a full schedule, and uh, I wanted to advise you of our arrival. No bother at all, Mr. Kleiner. Good hearing from you. And uh, congratulations. I assume the wedding went off on schedule. Yes, as planned at uh, my cousin's home in New York. And how is my little Emmeline, Mr. Kleiner? She's a ravishing bride, Mr. Hall. Uh, I was wondering when we might get together to uh, discuss the dispersal of her estate. The situation is unique. As understood, your allowance as guardian of Emmeline terminated with her 21st birthday. The marriage, two days later, caught me off guard. Well, I understand, Mr. Hall, but uh, well, I will be anxious for a definite date. As I advised you, I'm uh, rather tied up with investments in Europe, and, uh, well, I'd hate to delay my immediate plans. We're not talking about more than six, eight weeks, Mr. Kleiner. I'll see to it there's no delay. Then I'll look for a call from you, Mr. Hall. Good night. Good night, sir. Now, what do you get for the man who has everything? Soon will have patience.
Okay. Come on, let's, let's get out of here. I just managed to top every stupid thing I've ever done in my life. I apologize. Even if I hadn't frightened you, I had no business doing that. You're shivering. No. no I'm not cold. I'll, I'll be all right. Look, I have some coffee on in the boathouse. I'll get you some if you let me. And if you'll forgive me. Well, it's over with. I'll be just a second. after you wake up, you, you know what that dream was about. And then a minute later, it's gone. But I'm not supposed to talk about things like that. Is that a commandment or something? I, I think I'd better go. You're afraid of him, aren't you? No. I'm not afraid of anybody. I think you are. You don't even open your mouth when he's around. You even look different when he isn't here. Sort of relieved. You're very presumptuous, aren't you? Look, I'm going to waste a whole morning if I have to keep apologizing to you. So if we're going to be seeing each other every day, and eating breakfast a hundred feet apart, getting our mail from the same box, you're gonna have to start acting like a friend, and being one. I, uh, I like big breakfasts after swimming. Do you? Ugh. This design far surpasses any of my previous masterpieces. I forgot the front door. Well, I'm just a student architect, but I'm a graduate lover. Five o'clock, Robert. You have exactly 30 minutes to finish that plumbing layout. I think my initiative is being stifled. I should be allowed to go home at five o'clock, too. Power of education, Robert. See, I'm a graduate architect, but I'm only a student lover. You go easy on your homework. I know. The plumbing layout. Why? It's just a, 
Craig said he saw you coming home and there was someone with you. Well, I can't be responsible for what Craig thinks he sees. Luther says he found us a girl. We can talk to her in about a week. You handle it. I, uh, I did a painting of the stable today. Good. Painting is excellent therapy. I'm going to give it to Craig. He seemed to like it. town this evening for a few days. Will it uh, bother you to be here alone? You have the intercom to Luther's cottage. No. No, it won't bother me. Warren. Hmm? What do you do? I have no idea what business you're in. I had no idea you gave it any thought. Well, I really would like some Emily, idea. why don't we go out someplace for dinner tonight? I hear the food at the colony house isn't bad, and uh, well, I think you need a change of scenery. Come, let's go dress. Really? Oh, my little Pudgy, 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 Pidgey. Oh. 
Oh, mm, there's a kiss for being such a good little girl and waiting for me. Put you, you're here and you're real. You're not like those voices that fade away. Do you still remember how to dance? Come on. Oh, Pudgy, you'll never understand how much you mean to me. It's so good to see you and to know you. You know what? I'm exploring, and I want you to come with me. Come on, Uncle, go. Can't imagine who he is. Can you, Pucci? This must be his room, judging from all the things in it. It's so strange. Clothes in the drawers, toys. You almost get the feeling that he's just down the hall, brushing his teeth, putting on his pajamas. I'm about to walk through that door. You're not dressed. I've been searching the grounds for nearly an hour. We won't have time to go out to dinner now. I have a long drive ahead. You will, of course, leave this wing at once. Close the door after all, huh, Pucci? I'm so sure I did. Guarding for you. Nothing wrong, is there? Oh, no. No, not really. It was just that I thought I closed it. I am afraid this is my night for doors. You're not making any sense. Well, I'm being very feminine and very silly. It really doesn't matter. Well, maybe I should come up. No. No. Really. I was thinking about something else, and I thought I closed the door. It really doesn't matter at all. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.
about hot jobs. You ever been up in that old storage room? I leave such dreary chores to the peasants, Robert. Well, would my lordship consider parting with a dime so this peasant could imbibe a frosty coke? Certainly not. The machine's empty. Try some of our mountain spring cool water. Been robbing graves or something. No self-respecting corpse would be caught dead in that storage room. Mountain spring or hot spring? Am I supposed to thank you for this belated Christmas present? I thought you'd get a laugh out of this. This is the original plans to the garrison place. What? You're kidding. Not I, sir. I may be poor and slovenly, but I never make jokes about the venerable firm for which I work. You look at the detail in this place. It makes Taj Mahal look like a phone booth. East wing, four, six, eight rooms in there. They have this wing and the other one closed off. <laughs> well, that's a cheery thought to a man who slept in his car last night. You did what? It, well, for one thing, I tried to bluff at poker. For another thing, I tried to bluff at poker because I have a very expensive girlfriend. You know, but that's another thing. No tears. A couple more paychecks and I'll be financially independent again. What are you bucking for, juvenile delinquent? I've learned my lesson, Master. From now on, I shall behave. Hey, why don't you meet me for the coffee break? Maybe we can come up with something, Robert. Sure. Looks like a garage for sports cars. It's the stables. Oh, oh yeah, like uh, Grandma Moose has painted for you. Look at the detail they call for. All right, Robert, let's see if you're on the ball. Can you tell me what's wrong with this picture or that painting? <clears throat> it would seem to me that the artist has crossed swords with the architect. She uh, left out a window and pulled that west wall out about eight feet. You're right. I'm going to have to look at those stables again. But I think the painting's accurate. Fuzzy horses maybe didn't like the view? With all the space and structures on this property, why would anyone want to add eight feet to a stable? Eat more horses. No, no. They could always put those in the east wing. You check building permits for me tomorrow, will you? They moved them all over to the library. Uh, get all the volumes from 1880 up to the present. Are you sure you wouldn't like a few sets of the Encyclopedia Britannica thrown in with it? Well, the exercise will do you good, Scout. I'm very curious to see if they ever did remodel that stable. I'll make you a bet, Robert, that if they did, it was after Emmeline was born. I don't gamble, remember? Yeah. I bet she was around when the change was made. Now, saw you from the bridge. Figured you'd have something cool here. I'm sorry about the other night. Missing dinner with you. Remember what the doctor said. Don't search for the past. Let it find you. Well, in a way, it did. A key. The key to the east wing. It literally fell into my hand. Did you know that my room used to be in that wing? And there was another child's room, a little boy's. I even found a picture of him. Warren, you must know. Who was he? 
four generations of Garrisons and Bradfords have lived here. Now, how would I know? I could have asked Luther one. Perhaps even Craig knows. But I thought it only right to wait and speak to you first. You're becoming very defiant, Emily. I've repeatedly made it clear I want the doctor's orders obeyed. I'm not your ward any longer. I'm your wife. Well, no matter. I'll find out. Everett. Everett. That was his name. The boys. Everett. Please go on, Mort. Well, your Aunt Helen presented your uncle with a son. Sometime in 1935, 36, I don't really know. I knew the family only by reputation in those years. The rest was in the newspapers or talked about because of their prominence. Everett was born while, while they were on an extended tour of Europe. And then there was an accident of some kind when the boy was about four. A brain injury. Your aunt blamed herself. It was about that time that she became ill. She soothed her feelings of guilt by confining herself to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. And Everett? He lost his powers of speech. Intellectually, he stayed around the three-year-old level. They saw every specialist in the country. Even after we were at war, your family's money and position made it possible for Helen to take Everett to see a specialist in Geneva. She returned to Oakmont alone. Everett was killed in an automobile accident. Well, did I know him? No, you were about three when he died. After the original accident, it was all kept very quiet. It was almost heresy to openly discuss the fact that someone with garrison blood was mentally impaired. Yet, in a way, it's happened twice. One. Will we ever have children? I mean... Well, are you afraid? Afraid that there never was an accident? That Everett was born that way? Afraid the same thing could happen to us? Hardly. After your uncle's death in the London bombing, his will revealed that Everett had been adopted in Europe on that first trip. The rumors were that your uncle couldn't give Helen a child. You needn't be so tense. We're going home now. You heard what the doctor said. You're all well again. Henry, it's just a card. Guys, I'm holding you. Emily? It's Carla. I'm, I'm sorry, but I... I'm the one that should apologize. I knew you were back, but... but... Emily, you and I used to be very good friends. Our place is right next to yours. Well, I'm sure Paul Vapour remembers you. Well, uh... Carla, maybe sometime you and Pover Poo and I can visit. Oh, Emmeline, I'd love it. I have so much to tell you, mostly about my mad romance with the poorest boy in town and my hysterical mother's devious schemes to separate us. Well, I'd better stop right now. I could go on for hours. I'll call you real soon, okay? Oh, I'd love that. Bye, Carla. Bye for now. She doesn't remember a thing, Pauvre. Not a single thing. But I, 
I don't even have a library card. Mrs. Kleiner, you want it on her phone. It's your husband, long distance. Well, thank you, Gertrude. in the rain than he was for himself. It meant a lot to him you were coming with me. Was that the doctor who called you out of the room? Oh, yes. He says it looks a lot worse than it really is. Should have him home in less than a week. He sure picked a good day to come home early. I guess what had happened was right. I knew he had some kind of heart trouble. How did you know he had heart trouble? I never knew it. I don't know. It's about 200 feet from this garage to your front door. No contemporary architect would ever make that mistake. It's only a summer shower. I just as soon wait it out. About remembering, have you remembered anything about the stables? Should I? If you were painting a pet dog or a barnyard, tennis court, would you make the sky dark and menacing? No. No, of course not. Those are all pleasant subjects. Well, so are horses and riding and stables. Or do you have some fear about riding? No. Not at all. Well, you see what I'm getting at. The more I look at your painting, the more it bothers me. But did you know that the stables had been changed at some point, enlarged slightly? No. Well, they have been. Enough for a building permit to have been issued, but there never was one. I wanted to get inside, but they're all padlocked. Well, then break one. Tomorrow. Before Warren gets back. restless. So I did something I've been putting off for quite a while. I called the family lawyer. He'll be in his office tonight and I'm going to go see him. Well, do you want me to take you there? No. I, um, uh, I'll see you when I get back. All right, I'll watch for you.
Willie! In here. I got a little anxious. I think this should be it. There. Now he's he's probably hidden the hinges. Who? Uncle Luther. I just found the plans. He built this. But why? the matter with Luther, at least not until he's pretty much over this attack. But this room explains all those dark clouds in your painting. Whatever the reason for this room was, I knew about it. And you didn't like it. Look around you, Emmeline. This, this room isn't too hard to figure. It's obviously a boy's room, a boy 10, maybe 12, maybe even older boy whose existence was kept secret. And the reason for that isn't too hard to figure either. Everett, adopted by my Aunt Helen and uncle. He had a brain injury when he was about four, and then he was killed in an accident during the war. You mean sometime before 1945? Well, that's what Warren told me, and then I checked the newspaper reports in the library. You know, if we'd had this plane in World War II, we would have won it a lot quicker. This is an exact scale model of a T-33 jet trainer. It was first built in 1948. I know because I flunked out when I tried to solo in it. Well, then Everett didn't die when everyone thought. They hit him. In here. Craig. And when did he die? For that matter, did he ever die at all? What I need is an ally, Mr. Schoonover. Your uncle was my first choice, but I am not too sure I can afford the time it'll take for him to regain his health. I'm taking him home in the morning. So soon. That's good to hear. I asked you to my home instead of to my office, Mr. Schoonover, because I felt the less that was known of this meeting, the better. It's about Emmeline. You call her Emmeline? Why shouldn't I? I've known her for years. Your uncle calls her Miss Emmeline. I don't work for the Garrisons or Kleiner. Had you ever known Warren Kleiner before his marriage to Emmeline? Never. You get along with him? I hardly ever see him. Look, Mr. Hall. Would you like a drink? Yes. I think I need one. Uh, preference? Something stiff. Martini. It'll have to be on the rocks, I'm afraid. Fine. Eventually, I'll have the unit refrigerated. I want to devise a way that'll take a minimum of space. Would you say... It's a happy marriage? No. No, I wouldn't say that. How do you like it? One to four, one to three, or maybe even one to five? What? Your martini. One to four. 
I'm doing this from memory. I don't have it all labeled yet. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. I suspect she married Mr. Kleiner because he told her to. But of late, Emmeline is more her old self. No one will tell her anything much longer. But I imagine you've observed these changes in her. To my ally. Oh, I forgot. Hmm? Would you like an olive? Ordinarily, no. But uh, under the circumstances, certainly. Have you ever heard of a company called Egyptian Metals and Minerals Limited? No. Remarkable company. Main offices in Cairo. Only offices in Cairo. Actually, it's a little shop. It sells souvenirs and chips of stone supposed to be from the pyramids and the Sphinx. Shopkeepers prosperous. But can you imagine yourself putting money in this place to the extent of some $400,000? Quite a few people did. Mainly widows who knew their money should be working for them instead of sitting in a bank. The, the phony stock issue is big business in this country. And you'd be amazed at the people who fall for it. Especially when it's masterminded by a genius like Warren Kleiner. Warren Kleiner? Dean of the con men. One arrest, no convictions. All of this I've learned only recently. How about a cherry? Forget it. It seems that Mr. Kleiner's cunning could be his very undoing. The kind of person most likely to gamble is a gambler. A group of them from Las Vegas cashed in $250,000 worth of chips and sank it in Egyptian Metals and Minerals Limited. Now they want their money back? With interest. They've contacted me several times now. Evidently, Kleiner has told them of the fortune that soon will be his, and they wanted confirmation. I gave it to them. In the meantime, I've been holding up the settling of the estate as long as I could. Isn't this a police matter? Or a federal matter? Securities Exchange Commission, and they're already involved. But my concern, our concern, is Emily. She can afford the loss easily enough, but I'll do anything possible to avoid her emotional involvement. Mr. Hall, you make an excellent martini. Ah, uh, another. No. What do I do? Uh, I, I don't really know. I need time, information. If you overhear anything, learn anything, let me know. Mr. Hall, what do you know about Everett? Everett. Now, there's a name from the past. Poor Everett. Mercifully killed in an accident when he was eight or nine, I think. If I seem a little vague, it's, uh, it's because my father was still in practice at the time. He handled the garrison affairs. And you think it's possible that Helen Garrison was murdered? You are even closer to Emmeline than I'd guessed. And I think Emmeline is closer to the truth than anybody would guess. Helen's death may always be an enigma. Personally, I never ruled out murder. You realize that her confinement to that wheelchair was total? How did that happen? In the accident when Everett was killed, I think. Although the doctors found no damage to cause the paralysis, they said it was psychosomatic. But either way, I can find only a convenience to any theory suggesting that Kleiner killed Helen. I assure you, that's not his line. 
And I never eat olives. your mother What's the matter? Oh, 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 Craig, you were so awful and so real. Even now, I just don't know whether it was a dream. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. You mean your dream? I just can't tell. I, I remember calling him Everett. I, I can still, still see him standing there. Craig? Craig, I remember him now. I really remember him. Die when everyone said he was alive the night Aunt Helen was killed. It was it was her idea to keep him hidden. The doctor said he was hopeless and, and and she didn't want the whole world staring at him. And only the two of you and Luther knew about it. Food. But, then, but then only Auntie and Luther could do it. He, 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 he attacked me when I was 13. I can remember him. I can remember him pulling my clothes off. And then he can remember my clothes <laughs> It's over! Stop! <laughs>
He'd gotten out of the stable room somehow. Oh, Craig. That was the very night Aunt Helen was murdered. Oh, I, I, I just can't stay awake anymore. Then sleep, darling. It was only a dream. I'm so glad it's so Hey, aren't you jumping the gun a little bit? Oh, I'm just taking this plant. I'm getting a little bored just, just sitting around, you know. Well, you just sit around. Yeah, cool off. Hey, that might be good. Doctor called me after he saw you this morning. Oh? I didn't know this was your second heart attack. Yes, yes, it was, but uh, the first one was a lot worse, though. I was in that room you built in the stables a couple of weeks ago. Whatever happened to Everett? You know about him? Only what Emily's told me. Emily? Well, that's too bad. With all the nice things in her childhood, she has to remember something so tragic. What happened to him? I don't know. But you must know. No one else even knew he existed. Well, that's true. You see, that, that first heart attack that you mentioned, well, that came, came just a couple of hours after, well, after everything happened that night. You see, Greg, well, I was in the hospital almost a month. There was nothing I could do, no one I could tell. And somehow I just couldn't bring myself to let everybody know about Everett. Keeping his life a secret meant so much to Miss Helen. Well, with her gone, it just didn't seem right. I couldn't do anything about it. Nobody could understand. I don't expect you to. Then it is possible that he's still alive. No. No, I don't see how. Oh, Craig, I'm sorry to disturb you, but well, I have a plane to catch and my car refuses to start. What, again? Look, we just... That's a six-hour round trip. I have to work tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no. Only to Cedarhurst. They have a helicopter service to the airport now. All right. Put your things in my car. I'll be right with you. Thanks, Craig. When he called you an hour or so ago, what did he want? A pair of pliers. He wanted to fix a hinge on one of his suitcases. Look, I shouldn't be over a couple of hours. Why don't you stay awake? Emmeline's all alone. All right, I will. Sergeant, this is your captain. I may be collecting the rent tonight. Yes, right now. And remember, get rid of the doll. I'll have to stop for gas up ahead. Never mind the hood. I'd waste an hour fooling around under there. And you've done enough of that for one day. You really snap on the bait's toss. Well, suppose you make your point, since you're the one fishing. 
pliers, Mr. Kleiner, to fix a suitcase or stall a car. Well, why don't you check my car when you get back? You wanted me out of that house tonight, didn't you? You're not at all sure of that. You're not making any denials. Well, let's say I'm waiting for the accusation. Helen's death. Now, Craig, have you ever bothered to reconstruct the night of Helen's death? It's intriguing. A girl, mental stability questionable in view of the last six years. A girl scheduled to arise early to attend school is wandering around the North 40 at 2 a.m. Now, a woman, the sole barrier between this girl and a vast fortune, a helpless woman is drowned in the pool. Upon discovery, the only living person around is again this girl of questionable mental stability. I made it four even. I didn't want to hold you up, but you had two real low tires. These other guys were in a hurry too. You listen, you listen good. Up to now, I've been fumbling, feeling my way. I wanted to nail you for what you were and what you had in mind. I thought I knew all the possibilities from Las Vegas to Cairo, but I never figured on murder. Now you tell me who the Joker was in that car and why he's heading for Oakmont. I never even saw him. Kleiner! What's the plot? You're gonna keep your hands clean. You're not gonna do the dirty work. So who's doing it and why? She dies, you get the money, is it that simple? Doubting my ingenuity, Craig. It's an exquisite plan. My friends in Las Vegas think that I adore my wife, so they threaten her, not me. They'd never collect if I died. Now, we'll not go back. We'll continue to Cedarhurst. <laughs> Oddly enough, I wasn't trying to get you out of the house. I didn't think it mattered. I needed the pliers because the safety had jammed on this gun. It's still jammed in the firing position. You're too tense. Relax. I am.
Hold it. Right there. Where's Kleiner? You've heard her. There's a scoot over, I think, the young one. Who are you? Treasury Department. Look, all we want is Kleiner. He owes us money. You clobbered him? Yeah, I clobbered. You know where Kleiner is. Go get a light and look for him, please. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Forget him. It's Emily. If you're not the guy that was after her, then it's somebody else. Relax, my friend. Relax. Relax, hell. Kleiner's having her murdered. All oh, those Las Vegas guys? They can afford the loss. You see, they don't like us. Texas. A very delicate situation for them. Look, I'm trying to tell oh, you... Oh, about some... Goon Boy, the creep that visited her room last week? Yes. Forget it. We sent him away on a long vacation. Kleiner's still on the hook to those Vegas bums. He won't And stop we're in on the action. Believe me. Believe me. They won't play dirty now. Oh, my apprentice T-Man. It'll take him a week to find him.
Miss Emily. him hiding him in that stable room I never would have found him he might have gotten out and done the same thing all over again you killed him you killed Everett and you killed Aunt Helen <laughs> Robert where's Emily oh she's all right captain I appreciate your generosity and everything sneaking me in here she is all right she's fine I needed a place to sleep, and that east wing is very palatial and all that jazz. But after what I've been through tonight, you more than collected your rent. You said she was all right. She is, but me. Oh, that Emmeline babe had me going there for a while. I did just what you said. I ducked the poker game. I sent my lovely Carla home to her lonely bed, and, and then I stayed within earshot of Emmeline. Where is she? I saw her down by the pool. Your uncle was trying to calm her. Oh, poor kid, she probably heard you and thought, uh, who knows what she thought. Anyway, I think we've settled most of her problems for tonight. So, at ease, Sergeant. Maybe that poker game's still going. Save your money. She's down by the pool? Right. She was going to call the police. Would have called me a murderer. I had a right to do it. It was his father. That night, she almost forgot that. She almost forgot that I gave her the child that she wanted so much. You, you did it, and I remember. I remember everything you Your aunt was so foolish. I don't dare. I never would have found him. have to do it. No. No. He takes him. Tell me about it. Oh, oh, oh. It's all right now. He can't hurt you. 